20 minutes before the top of the end now, and it's a Fox News alert. Right now, an active search is existing, and search and rescue is on for seven people after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge outside of Baltimore. Our next guest says there is no good reason for the ship to have hit where it did. Charlie Pereira is a former NTSB Marine accident investigator and joins us right now. Charlie, good morning to you. Morning, guys. Uh, I know we haven't heard from the officials. I'm sure they've talked to the pilots who were driving the boat at the time. What does it look like to you went wrong? Well, obviously, a ship should not be uh, impinging upon uh, structural supports for a bridge. So uh, the navigation and control of the ship uh, was uh, erroneous. And uh, uh, it could be a combination of factors or individual factors. Could be simply uh, human error on the navigation uh, by the crew. Uh, it could be a combination of uh, loss of control or navigational system failures. Uh, back in the 1990s, we had a cruise ship, the Royal Majesty, uh, uh, have a bad uh, GPS signal connection, and uh, they, uh, the navigation systems indicated they were in one place while mm -hmm. the boat was actually in another, wow. and uh, that resulted in that cruise ship grounding. And uh, uh, you know, something like that could have occurred on the ship. Uh, they could have lost control uh, of their rudder and steering uh, and not been able to avoid the impact. Uh, there's a variety of factors that, that could have come into play, and the NTSB and the Coast Guard uh, will be getting to work to determine that. There should be a voyage data recorder on board this uh, craft, which records uh, data, uh, like the flight data recorder on an airplane, as well as uh, uh, crew communications voices up on the uh, bridge of the, of the vessel. So, mm -hmm. so uh, hopefully, the NTSB will be getting those data yeah. uh, by the end of today. So, Charlie, and if our producers can go back to the video of wh where you see it approaching. And we look at the video of the, the ship and the power goes on and then it goes off and then it goes back on. So, so, so tell us what does that moment speak to when you have the power going out and then suddenly back on before the crash? Uh, that's not a good indication. <laughs> uh, you know, there could have been uh, some kind of a power problem that resulted in inability to control the vessel. Um, you know, if you lost all power and uh, it's uh, some form of a power steering system, then obviously that would uh, that would prevent you from being able to properly control. You can see a pretty significant turn at the end there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe once they got the power back on, the right rudder was. Uh, uh, able to be input, but it was too late. He's already headed for the column there. So, so uh, does a black smoke tell you he's trying to go in reverse? Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, I certainly think that uh, one of the things that they should have done uh, at the power loss would have been to, as they call on the maritime world, uh, reduce all way. Uh, in other words, come to a stop uh, if you if you lose power, but. They also could have lost control of the uh, the engines and the thrust uh, if that were to have occurred as well. You know, uh, so, yeah, there, there's a number of issues that, that the NTSB and the Coast Guard will be looking into. Uh, they also need to do something, um, I thought, this morning about providing uh, collision warnings for uh, vehicles that are transiting these bridges. With today's technology, they should be able to put uh, radar-type detectors on the bridge uh, structure itself to detect if there's going to be any ship collision and bring down some cross bucks, kind of like they do on mm -hmm. uh, railroads Trumper. when there's a train. Uh, uh, it's time for the NTSB to call for industry to, to look into developing those types of systems that would automatically bring down cross bucks if there was a collision impending uh, that was detected and try to prevent any further vehicles from getting on the bridge structure from that point on. You know, Charlie, it, it's really jarring to watch this video. You see two semis cross, and you think, gosh, if they would have just been seconds earlier, if they would have caught that red light, you know, it could have been that driver. It's heartbreaking. But what you're just saying about these radar detectors, how many bridges that you're aware of in the country have this? Do we need some sort of new regulation? Because it seems like it could save a lot of lives if the pilot communicated with someone who then sent out an alert to these cars. I'm not aware of any such systems. You know, there are some bridges that have, uh, you know, swing bridges and raised bridges and stuff like that that have uh, actively manned. But a fixed bridge like this, where the bridge is supposed to be high enough to clear all crossing traffic underneath, uh, 
I don't, you know, they wouldn't have any uh, permanently manned situations like that. But uh, the idea that I had is just simply that, you know, it's an engineering idea that I had, like many others that I had while I was at the board. Uh, in this case, you know, uh, we have the technology nowadays to put radar type detectors on these bridges uh, that are fully aware of the geometry of the bridge and they're able to detect oncoming ships and predict uh, based on the motion of that target whether or not it's going to impinge uh, any of the bridge uh, support structures like this and in fact could have provided potentially at least a minute or two or more of a uh, uh, warning to bring the cross bucks down and allow those vehicles that are running 55 to 70 miles an hour on that bridge to go ahead and clear the bridge and uh, not allow any more traffic on the bridge until that warning uh, sense, sure. uh, that sense condition uh, has been eliminated. It's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Pereira, sir, thank you very much for joining us live. Thanks, Charlie. You're welcome. So we're staying on top of this bridge. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.